Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I just want to be the best in basketball, so I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being six three six four to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science to the arts, all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses the long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. 
In four, four years, years this, this could, could be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome inside the Sport One Parkview Ice House. We are here for week number two of the High School Hockey Association's High School Hockey Games. Yeah, Brandon, happy to be here yet again. Uh, another week, and it's a big one. You know what? This is, uh, you know, last week was opening week. That's obviously a big one. Uh, but I think this is where we're really getting to the meat of what exactly is going to go down this season. We've got our preseason one and two and our preseason three and four facing off. So I think we're going to get a lot of questions answered here tonight. Uh, it could be a real mental examination for a couple of teams. Uh, see what they're made of tonight. First on tap, as you see on your screens now, is the Fort Wayne Vipers taking on the Homestead Spartans. Carol and Leo will face off at 9 o'clock. Take a look next week. We got Carol and Homestead at 7, Leo and the Vipers at 9. Upcoming events, Veterans Night is November the 8th. And then the Summit City Classic is in town for November's 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Yeah, so, I mean, the crossover game, it should be interesting. I know a lot of the teams really already played crossover games, so I don't know how much there is to say. I've actually uh, come across the understanding that Carroll uh, is playing quite the loaded slate of crossover games this weekend. I think they play, like, Culver, Penn, uh, and uh, Southwest Michigan Blades this weekend. Uh, so just an absolute murderer's row. Those are some of the top three teams in the state. Uh, so that should be an interesting one. Uh, and if I didn't have other things to do, I might try and uh, make my way to uh, Culver. But, you know, <laughs> life goes on and I will not be able to attend, unfortunately. But best of luck to the Chargers, and uh, we'll see what else everyone has on tap uh, here in a couple of weeks on home ice. So today's crew consists of me, Brandon Porter, your play-by-play, -play, Joe Hacker, once again, color commentary, and a third color commentary starting up now. Hunter Sosenheimer is also going to be on camera. Excited to be here. Oh, absolutely, Hunter. That's what I like to hear. Welcome to the team, Hunter. You know what? I'll just turn it over to you. I mean, what are your kind of initial thoughts? I mean, I know you're not kind of here on the week-to-week -week grind like we are, but you know what? You're, you're not totally unfamiliar here. Yeah, I mean, last year I was here quite a bit, and then this year, first week here, so I didn't get to see these teams play last week. But from what it looks like on the big thing is uh, Carol and Leo are your top dogs in the Fort Wayne High School Hockey Association, so that's going to be a good matchup to see, Homestead versus the Vipers. The Vipers struggled there in the first game, but we'll see how they see if they can bounce back against this Spartans group that's looking to make a statement here this year. So highlights from last week, and it's pretty much all Leo Carroll at this point. Two points for everybody, and it's all one goal, one assist for Colton Calhoun, Tyson Finfrock, and Dylan Carto. <clears throat> Both teams are 1-0, and oh, Carroll and Leo respectively. Carroll, uh, six goals for, one goal against. Leo, four goals for, and two goals against. And then obviously we got Homestead and the Vipers on the receiving end of those. Yeah, and so like you said, Homestead and the Vipers on the receiving end. And uh, you know what, Brandon, as these two teams kind of take to the ice here, this is potentially the more intriguing of the two games in all honesty. This might be the one I'm looking more forward to tonight because this is the one where I feel like we have a little bit more of uh, some gray area going on. I feel like Carroll is a pretty solid number one. I feel like, you know what, we could see some uh, an upset in that one. But I feel like this is the one where we're really going to find out how things are going to transpire here on the potential bottom half 
of the standings. Obviously, only four teams. Bottom half is pretty much right at the top anyways. But we'll see here. Now, one thing I want to note, Homestead not on the ice yet. They might have forgot what time the game started. This is not a good start for the Spartans. So I guess in the meantime, we'll take a look at the goaltending leading the way. Luke Van Amtorp leads it right now. 11 saves, one goal against, .917 save percentage. Uh, Bomber, number two right now with obviously one win. Somehow credited with only one save on our sheet. Uh, 2.0 goals against, 933 save percentage. That's, yeah, that math isn't math. That's a, that's a typo. <laughs> uh, Connor Gould, 18 saves, 4.0 goals against, 818 save percentage. And then Brody Wasworm, 6 goals against, 793 save percentage. Obviously, that's all with obviously one game play. Yeah, I'm trying to find the actual stop stops here for Leo. And, I mean, they don't even have Bomber listed on the other page on where the full roster is under the goalies. So we still don't even know. So... That is a, a potential oversight there. Don't you have know. your shots from last week written huh? down? On your I, do have the I do have the shots written down. Uh, so it looks like uh, 22 shots, uh, 27 shots on goal for Homestead, which means 25 saves for Palmer last week. There we go. There we go. We got it worked out. Well, We're team's taken to the ice. We'll take a quick break here when we return. In the meantime, on Summit City Sports, this is High School Hockey. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the 8 to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory courses we try to get them not just exposure to measurements and exposure to some of the uh, devices that you'll be used, but I like to actually assign projects that are, you know, realistic projects. Those projects, this project-based learning, help students to work together in a group and be hands-on with their uh, the material or the uh, product that they're creating. Engineering students at Indiana Tech are, to me, stand out because I know that they've had a lot of experiences working in groups, working on projects, um, doing lab experiments to help them understand the material, and I think that prepares them well for industry. First thing I'll tell a high school student is study, study, study. Get all the math you can possibly get. Um, I honestly believe that the critical thinking skills you learn in math courses will help you with engineering courses. The type of knowledge base that students should have coming in, they need to be problem solvers and critical thinkers. Uh, those two things are really the essence of engineering. Regardless of flavor, they're going to need to figure out there's a problem here, how do I solve it? And they, they need to think critically about that. They need to observe, listen to people, and then kick in those problem-solving skills to, uh, to solve the problem. Part of the, the growth of Indiana Tech has involved uh, a, an increasing number of international students. So I think if we can expose students to different ideas, um, different cultures, again, it makes them that much more competitive in the marketplace. In uh, the Fort Wayne area, we have uh, lots of large companies, BAE Systems, Fort Wayne Metals, 
General Motors, Raytheon, um, Harris Corporation, and the list goes on. We have a lot of employers that want our engineering students. Indiana Tech, um, I think, continues to serve students even beyond their graduation. We really strive to keep in touch with our alumni on a personal level just to see how they're doing, but then also they want to give back to the university because of the experiences they've had here, um, so they want to provide opportunities for other students here as well. Back here at the Sport Warm Park View Ice House. We got about 20 seconds left here before warm ups concluded. Then we'll do anthem and have puck drop. Yeah, right around, uh, it's right around that time of the night, you know, to get this thing started. First game of the week. Should be a good one. This should be a very exciting week of hockey. We're already behind schedule, though. I will note it is 7 10. Uh, and the. Uh, Ice block was supposed to start at 7, so we're a little bit behind schedule. That's not what we like to see in week two, but you know what? At least we're going to get right into the uh, right into the hockey here. <coughs> so you were talking with uh, head coach Kurt Patrick for the Spartans a little bit. You made note that we're going to be missing a couple of players this week. Yeah, it sounds like Homestead's going to be playing without a couple of their high-end players. I believe Whitaker uh, and Adazic uh, among them, and the uh, other one I have forgotten but uh, we'll see how that factors in to this one but I think more of note is uh, the starting goalies for tonight and it's going to be Cam Clark for the Vipers and Alex Doherty for Homestead which is uh, a little bit uh, surprising not exactly what I would have uh, foreseen coming here uh, at least at the Vipers end of things I would have thought they would have stuck with Rossworm given the last week was a lot of just kind of unlucky and bad defensive plays that led to those goals. But maybe they're kind of employing a rotation this year. So I guess we'll just have to see how it all plays out. But we are ready for the Star Spangled Banner. So, we get set for puck job here. Once again, we'll take a look at the starting goaltenders. As Joe mentioned, down in the Vipers' end, it is going to be Cameron Clark uh, in goal for the Vipers. We saw a very small sample size last season with him in net for the Vipers. We'll see what he can bring this year. Out in the opposite of him is going to be Alex Doherty, senior goaltender for the uh, Homestead Spartans. Both him and Connor are senior goaltenders. Yeah, so uh, I think the more interesting one, you kind of hinted at it. Clark didn't get a whole lot of time last year behind Ben Marks, so but we have seen him a little bit. He uh, was back in the day, uh, played a game with Carroll as a call-up from the JV team. Uh, obviously is on the team now, uh, and we'll see what we get out of this uh, because he's looked good in his uh, time that he's played, uh, but obviously behind Marks, they didn't really put a whole lot of faith in him. Uh, with all things considered last season. So I'm just curious to see what we get. You know, it's another new year. It's a new year for him. Uh, and so we'll see. I think the bigger question is what's the Vipers' goaltending plans 
at large. Are they going to rotate? Are they going to ride with Clark? Are they going to ride with Rossworm? We'll see, and I think tonight might have a, a little bit of a indication as to how that's going to go if uh, Clark puts up a good one here. Once again, I'm Brandon Porter. That was Joe Hacker and Hunter Sosenheimer joining us color and camera work as well. As Goodine gets it inside the zone. Loxton plays it around the wall to the near side. Held inside the zone. Here's a wrist shot, loose in front. That one goes to the far corner. Wessler around the wall to Watson. Watson backhand fed down low. Van Ryn with it. Circles back around the wall to the near side. Oh, hit a rogue stick there as Reinhold keeps it in. Lewis, there's a shot by Whistler, save made by Doherty. And this one's cleared off the wall, down the ice, and it's tipped, so far no ice. Yeah, the Vipers buzzing here early, fellas. They're really rocking it on the attack so far. We'll see how it develops here. Out in neutral, Gerber drops it back. Gutman, stretch pass, has Litwinko. Oh, Litwinko, here's a shot. Blockers save may rebound way up into the air. And I think they're going to blow it dead. May have touched the safety netting. Yeah, see, I think that was a bad change there by the Vipers. It looks like, I mean, that's the only explanation you would hope for not having anybody over there and Litwinko being kind of alone. So it's just another defense. Uh, Litwinko, excuse me. Uh, so I made just, it too. Uh, just another uh, I made it too. example here early on. The Vipers got to clean things up a little bit on the back end. In the neutral we go, poke checked out by Franks. Dumped inside the zone, around the wall to the near side corner. Bertels almost took it away as Franks lays a heavy hit on Gerber. Hornsby off the wall for Bertels. To the near side, Scully picks it up, circles around. Scully to the high near face off circle. There's a shot into the glove of Doherty who hangs on. Yeah, and right there you just see the individual talent that Michael Scully has, able to find his way off the wall there, stick handle through some traffic, and get a quality shot off from a good shooting location. Uh, but Doherty does a good job making the stop there. Vipers are buzzing here in the offensive zone. Absolutely buzzing. Psst. This one cleared out off the faceoff when Knudsen sends it down low to Llewellyn. Really put a lot into that one. He actually sent himself backwards. It is McNary getting inside the zone. Uh, one thing we did learn uh, from our games last week is uh, Thomas Chapman and the Ethan Chapman for Leo are actually brothers. Yeah, that's very interesting. You know what, I, I guess we've done away with the brother rule uh, in the time being, or maybe they just don't want to play on the same team. I would also respect that decision uh, as someone that had a uh, brother back in the day, of course. Uh, so I guess we'll have to watch out next time those two teams play if there's any uh, friendly fire going on. Face off, far side. New centerman comes in. Um, yeah, another important point I want to bring up here really fast. It looks like we still have Gangnam Style in the playlist, so that is always good to see. The throwback. The means live on. Llewellyn with it. Fed over and held in. Oh. And then a heavy hit there on Brenner. This one goes wide. Around the wall, it is going to be sent back down low by Gart. And the delayed offsides here is touched up and plays whistled down. That one crept back over the line in the center. Can't do that. Can't let that happen. Looks like we're uh, rocking some specialty pucks this season that I got sent a photo of with all the team logos on them. Those are pretty neat looking. Really? Yeah, I'll show you the picture here at the next whistle. I might have to try and acquire myself one of those. Uh, this one's sent around the wall. Hurley with it. Around to the near side, knocked down by Bertels. Bertels gets loose, but it is knocked away. Here's Strict. Dodges a hit from Bertels, loses it for a brief moment. And given chase is Morrison as he and number 86, Hendricks, tie up. Hendrick. Locks him with it. Got a bit of a hip check there for Bertels. Uh, do a little uh, Parker Ray on that one. Parker Ray used to love to throw the hip checks. Used to be his go-to. That's pretty cool looking puck, isn't it? Oh, they didn't have any of those. Yeah, I know. It's kind of nice. I like it. 
Faceoff comes all the way back down inside of the Homestead zone. 11.54 to go here in the first. Nothing up on the board, no score, no penalties. Latwinko with it. Being chased down by Van Ryn as those two fall down to the ice. I'll tell you what, the Vipers are moving their feet tonight so far in this one. They are going at it here early. <coughs> Gerber gets a bump there. Van Ryan in the high slot with a shot that is blocked. Whistler, pro checked by Gerber. Van Ryan knocks it away, locks it over to the far side. The Twinko with it. Tries to feed up the ice. It's knocked down accidentally by Loxton, and it is loose in the center ice before being played once again by the Twinko. Into the zone on the attack. Fakes the move, backhand through the crease, wide. Out to the point for Hyde. Down low, Scully intercepts. Looking at the option, Scully decides to skate it up. Over the line on the attack Ooh. as Loxton lays a hit there. Scully stays on his feet. Scully to the corner, Franks with it. Franks around the wall to the near side, out to the point for Knudsen. There's a shot Ooh, towards the net, that one one's up. wide. The Twinko backhands it out of the zone, knocked down by Franks. Scully, I just know he's wearing the C for the Vipers. Scully with a shot that's wide, a bit of a hard clunk off the glass. Sounded hollow. This one goes down to the ice to be played by Scully. Scully off the wall, missed Franks. He's going to be played now by Gutman. He goes off the wall as he looked for Doherty as that one rolls towards the net. And Clark will play it to the far side. Ooh. McNary lit up there along the far wall. Big collision alert. And I'm trying to figure out who that was. That was Dominic Gart with the hit. G-A-R-D-T. Llewellyn sends it down low around the wall over to the far side. This one up into the air, eventually being settled down by the Vipers. They clear it out to center. Llewellyn with it. Over to Gutman. Has to retreat further into the zone. Plays it off the wall and is gathered up now by the Vipers. Chapman with it. Now I'm actually going to have to know the spelling as Doherty now covers it. Now I said it was Doherty that played it, but uh, Wesley is spelled differently than Alex. Really? So D-A-U-G-H-E-R-T-Y. So if they're watching, I would comment on Facebook, giving us a breakdown of how to say that one, and we would appreciate it. Huh, you're right. I wonder if that's just a typo, though. Whoops. I don't know. That might just be a typo. So phase off one on one time feed is wide. Uh-oh, comes out. Comes out. As I was looking on my uh, sheet here for oh the spellings, here's a oh shot oh. and a save made by Doherty. Play whistled down. Great job there from uh, Bartels. Vipers are controlling a lot of the possession here in this first part of the first <laughs> period. Good to see for the Vipers, but Homestead is actually like standing out defensively here, as I've noticed. They're just blocking shots, getting right in front of them, helping their keeper out. That's why this game's still scoreless. We'll yeah, see. the Vipers have really been buzzing, like you said, Hunter. They've really <laughs> been controlling the possession. That was a great look there for Bertels. But like you said, Homestead doing a good job hanging in this one so far. Still nil-nil. Taking away Van Ryan. Poke checked by Hurley. Good eye and plays it now around behind the net to the far side. Forced back oh. off the wall. Van Ryan lost it in his feet as he was near side. Had a good opportunity. And that one is under the stick of Reinhold and cleared it down. Watson plays it now in his own zone. Lost it as it was, I believe, Loxton who sent it down low, and that looks to be wrong. And that was Whis. Nope. Ooh, the wrong Vipers. team, Morrison. Using the speed to get to that. Wrong yeah. 16. I'm telling you, Hunter, they're moving their feet tonight. Chopping it up. Scully throws it inside the zone as it'll be around to the near side behind the net now. Hurley plays it. 
Hurley going up the far side, taking a look, tries to do a move around. The defense there gets a shot off, it's wide. Bounce back to the oh. same side, it scores! Yeah, I'd love to see a replay on that here, but that is just textbook kind of how it's been going, man. You know, they're really taking care of the play here. They're doing a great job, the Vipers are. They're controlling the play, look at this. This is, I think, Hurley the whole way. This gets around one. Fires it, just bounces right back. Clark doesn't even know where it's at. I mean, that is just yet another tough one, man. And it just cannot really catch a break. It's just very inopportune stuff happening for him. An unfortunate bounce off the wall. Went back to the same side it got uh, basically hit off of. So far side, bounced off the wall, back to the far side. Yeah, that's just one of those fluky situations. Like, I don't know if I've ever seen something like that one happen before. I mean, it's obviously got to do with the angle of how the shot was on the towards the goal. But, yeah, that's, that's another weird one. Here comes Scully. Scully tries to drive towards the net. Save made Doherty, who hangs on. The good news, though, is the Vipers, you know, for the first, you know, five-plus minutes of this game, you know, they've done a great strategy of simply just having the puck. If you have the puck, the other team obviously can't score. So if they just get back to that, you know, they're playing a good game. And hopefully they just keep their eyes on the prize here, and you know what, chalk up another fluky goal and be like, let's just get right back to it, process over outcome. Off the face-off, it is around out to the point. Scully keeps it in with a shot into the glove of Doherty, who will stop play once again. And a nice heavy wrister there from Scully. The only thing I would maybe say is, you know, have these guys on the face-off, crash in the net, have that a set play, shoot it low, hope for a rebound. Off the draw, tied up, poked free by the Vipers. Scully can't keep it in. This one sent back inside the zone. Gutman plays it. Gutman behind the net. Goes over to the near side for Hurley. Off the wall, it'll be played by Fogwell. Shoots it inside the zone as it bounces off the wall. Clark will touch it to Scully. Scully raising down the far side into the zone. Scully takes it behind the net. Hits the brakes, feeds it to the slot. Nobody oh. there, and we got a penalty coming up. I think think it could be on Homestead, and it is. Well, there you go. Here's an opportunity for the Vipers. We were told how nasty their power play supposedly is. Let's see if we see it here this week. And it's going to be tripping the call. So the Vipers go on the power play, and it looks like it'll be Hurley heading off for two minutes. And that is not ideal for Homestead. <coughs> Already down a couple of their top-end players to lose another one to the sin bin here. Not how you would like to draw this one up for the Spartans, but we'll see if they can hang on for two minutes here and get a couple of nice big old clears. Face off win by the Vipers, so good start to the power play. Scully goes to Bertels. Sends it towards the slot, knocked away by Hyde. Ormsby turns it over to Latwinko, who clears it out. Scully has it now for the Vipers, goes over to Bertels. Oh, uh, Scully and Ormsby both wearing the C, so co-captains there. Spreading the love. <clears throat> so much leadership. Scully behind the net. Pressure by Latwinko, almost taken away. You even got Clark to react on that one. Off the clang of the sticks. Here's Bertels. Ooh. He gets pushed into Ouch. the wall there, and that one's cleared back out by Loxton. I think it was Martinsky who laid the hit there. Yeah, he kind of put him right into our linesman here as well on the low. Here is Scully over to the near side now as it's Bertels. He's into the zone. Bertels hits the brakes at the hash marks, goes out to the point for Scully. Ah, Scully, you gotta look over. Here's Bertels, centers to the slot, there's a shot save made and Doherty has it. When Scully gets the puck at the top of the bluey there, he's got Ormsby getting ready and trying to load one up. Off to his right, gotta take a look there, maybe dish it over to your man. You know, they end up getting the shot out of the middle of the ice anyways, but ended up being kind of a soft one, just kind of, you know, having to get an odd angle at sending it towards the goal. So we'll see what they do here with 54 still to go on the man advantage. Off the faceoff, pulled back by Bertels. Over to Ormsby. Ormsby to Watson. Ormsby missed the pass as it is out to neutral. Watson plays it. 
Ormsby picks it up. Goes over to Whistler. Whistler tries to feed it to Van Ryan. Intercepted by Gerber. It's still loose at center ice. Picked up by Watson, who drops it back to Bertels. Here you go. Ormsby far side with a shot. Blocked in front. Great job by Gutman to really get in the way and wear that one. That one was a nice, uh, had some heat on it coming from Ormsby. Here's Watson up to Ormsby. Ormsby inside the zone. Ten seconds to go on the power play. Second opportunity stopped again by Doherty. McNary ties up with Whistler. Ormsby has it. Ormsby with a wrist shot into the stomach of Doherty, who hangs on. And Doherty been real solid so far for the Vipers, uh, excuse me, for the Spartans, fellas. I mean, he's been under almost constant pressure. I mean, the Vipers had the puck in 90% of this game, probably. And Doherty been strong. Hasn't seen a ton of, you know, super dangerous chances, but you can only stop the ones they give you, and he's been doing a great job of that so far in this one. Taken away. Here's Strick the other way. Strick by himself now with a shot. Save made by Clark. Yeah, and that's good stuff by Clark. Strick, you know, feels the back check bearing down on him, decides it's time to get it off, but Clark at the top of the blue paint, able to just drop right down and get the squeeze on that one. His first action here uh, in the last couple of minutes, I think maybe even since the goal. Face off, cleared out by the Vipers. This one in the high slot is out of the zone, cleared out by Homestead. Oh, my goodness. It's loose in the slot. There's a heavy hit there. Just outside the crease and another penalty. This one's going to be on the Vipers. Yeah, and honestly, I think that's probably a pretty easy one there for the official. That was probably running a little high. Here's Just laid high. another one. Hide off the wall, and it's touched up by the Vipers. And the Spartans have a chance to go on the power play and extend the lead to two. Yeah, and so this is... He big for Homestead because look you're getting it really kind of taken to you obviously the scoreboard doesn't reflect that they're already winning 1-0 if they can absorb all these punches that the Vipers are throwing and then put two on the board first if you're Homestead I think you'll probably be pretty happy with that face off control by the Vipers they clear down the ice <laughs> Brandon that's not the start they were looking for on the power play here is Hurley, leaves it for Martinsky. Martinsky racing up the far side, hits the break, still has control though, as he takes it to the corner, there's a shot, save made, pops loose! And plays whistle down as yeah. the referee lost sight. Yeah, Thought fortunately Clark for Clark, uh, hits off of his bucket, and then <laughs> I think it's Chappelle that's down there. He's in that far side corner, so when it hits the helmet and drops down, he doesn't see it drop down because it's probably blocked by Clark. So that's a good break there for the Vipers. Not waiting here. Uh, one of the players who got the chin strap. Scully gets bumped there by Gerber as it is picked up now with Twinko. Poke check by Scully. Great job there. That one backhanded way down the ice and cleared. Hurley racing up the middle. Goes to the far side, takes it inside the zone. Hurley centers it. That one is blocked and cleared. Yeah, got to be honest, neither of these power plays is all that impressive so far. Uh, it seems like Homestead can get in the zone and kind of stop it up, but can't really get much further than that, and they're just kind of turning it over and allowing the Vipers to clear it out. Gutman retreats to his own zone. Gets to Loxton, trying to set up the breakout. Good stick left there by Scully, breaks it up and sends it right back inside the Homestead zone. Yeah, and just probably not the best pass there. I mean, to a guy that was very much covered in that situation. Martinsky cuts to the middle. There's a shot, scores! Under the blocker of Clark and Homestead's up 2 nothing. Yeah, so there you go. For Homestead, that's exactly what you're looking for. They get the power play goal. And for the Vipers, that's exactly what I was talking about. You know, you're throwing all the punches, uh, and it's certainly got to hurt when they essentially just bounce right back at you and you're trailing 2-0 before the end of the first period. So I really like their strategy for a lot of the game of simply not letting Homestead have the puck. Uh, but... 
it's uh, that other percentage of the time that's just not really working out for him. Face-off win by the Vipers. As is played now by Van Ryn. Van Ryn lost it. Nary tries to play it up ice. Chapman with it. Poke checked away by Van Ryn. Here come the Vipers. Whistler tries to take it inside the zone. Kenna Llewellyn trips him, and we have a penalty coming up for tripping to Llewellyn. Vipers back on the power play, 0 for 1 on the night. Yep, and we'll see. Here you go. The Vipers, though, at least they get a chance to bounce right back from it here before we close out this period. Don't need to say it probably, but obviously I will. They would very much like to uh, cut this lead in half here and get back within one. Officials on their games tonight with the calls. Three power plays here. In rapid succession, too. Face off one by the Spartans, and it's held in by Scully. Good job to race over to the near side. Scully with a rush shot, tipped in front, and it's caught by Doherty. Hey, good redirect, though, by Van Ryn. Getting his stick in there and getting the tip in and getting it redirected. Just didn't, unfortunately, for the Vipers uh, make its way in. Face off near side. Chapman against Bertels. One back by the Vipers. Scully has it at the point, holds it in. Over to Bertels, cutting down. There's a shot off a shin pad. Here's Van Ryan. Doherty does not see it. I love that nice little feathery shot there from Bertels. That was good stuff. <laughs> Scully keeps it in once again. Sauce to Bertels. There's a shot blocker save made by Doherty. Bertels bumped off the play by Hurley. Chapman's there. He's poke checked by Whistler, and it's cleared by Hurley. Clark plays it down to Scully. 118 to go here in the first period. 112 left on the power play for the Vipers. Inside the zone is Scully. Hits the brakes at the blue line. Over to Bertels. Back to Scully. Scully fakes the shot, goes over to the far side. Coming off the bench is Gudine, and it's taken away by Latwinko, and it's cleared. Here's a race now between Latwingo and Scully. Latwingo hits the brakes, dodges a hit from Scully. The Vipers are pinned in their own zone for a brief moment before Bertels has it now and coming down the ice. Bertels with a shot, save made, Doherty the rebound. Nice. And off the post and in! That was beautifully done there by Jackson. Bertels has both of the Vipers' goals so far in league play. That's a power play goal, a PPG, if you will. And that's a big one with 41.8 seconds to go here in the period. One for two on the power play. And I was just about to say, initially, he doesn't really follow this shot up. You see, he kind of takes a shot, and he just watches it for a second. And then the rebound comes out, and he activates again, and he's able to put it upstairs. So good stuff there by Bertels, recognizing he needs to get moving again, and he finds the back of the net there. Replay brought to you by Tra Traction Athletic Performance. Goodman with it behind the net. <clears throat> so Vipers respond to the power play. Martinsky lost it at center ice. It's sent back into the Homestead zone. 27 to go here in the period. No ice here. Watson goes chase. Loxton bumps him off. This one being dug for. Gathered up now by Homestead. Centers it. Hits the side of the net. As he had Martinsky all alone in the low slot. That one cleared off the wall. Matwinko nice. gives chase. He picks it up with two seconds to go, tries to stretch it out. Nothing will happen there. And the horn will sound after 15 minutes of play. We got a 2-1 score. We'll take a quick break here on Summit City Sports. You're watching High School Hockey. Waffle breakfast sandwiches are dropping at Tim's. Our sweet, fluffy maple waffles packed with a fresh cracked egg, savory sausage, or sizzling bacon, and melty, gooey cheese. The maple waffle breakfast sandwich, made to make your day. It's time for Tim's. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Back here at the Sport One Park View Ice House as we get set for the second period. 
Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, today's broadcast is brought to you by SummonCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260Sports. That is 260Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all high school uh, games. Correct. Brandon, I just want to come to you with this news here. Hunter as well, of course. Uh, shots on goal for that first period. Vipers 15, Homestead 7. So we're being very liberal with the shot count tonight. Uh, I'm not disputing uh, the Vipers doubling up the shots. I'm just disputing. Uh, I do not know if I think Homestead got seven shots that period. Uh, or 15 for the Vipers is also probably a little bit on the generous side. But I digress. Faceoff pulled through by Gadine, and the Vipers have it. Van Ryan lost it for a brief moment, doesn't touch it up, so we play on. Latwinko lost control of it at the Spaceman logo at center ice. This one's sent into the zone. Given chase, Llewellyn gets bumped into the wall there. Vipers trying to play as it's tied up. This one is gloved down and coming up the ice, or rather down, is Latwinko. There's a shot right in the glove of Clark, who hangs on. When he hits that glove, man, it's got a it's got a loud sound. I mean, you can hear it smack. I mean, we could hear it from all the way down there. I mean, it sounds like that glove almost needs to be broken in a little bit. It kind of just depends on where it hits it. Yeah? That was probably more towards the palm than, like, the actual, like, sweet so, spot, I guess is you what know. it would be called. Yeah. Where it catched more of the twine. That sounded like more palm. Yeah, you're probably right. This face-off won by the Spartans. They send it around the wall over to the far side. And it is Hurley. Off the wall, Ormsby pokes it away. Hurley tries again, this time to the near side. Watson gives him a poke check. Strick tries to do something, but he's tied up with Watson at the moment. Here come the Spartans again. Onside play, it looks like it is. Locks in and gives chase to Reinhold. Morrison's there, lays a bump. And now Colton Franks goes around Strick. And it is played now by Watson. Off the wall, cleared out to center. Hyde gathers it up. And just inside the blue line, it is going to be sent below the goal line now. Hurley missed it. Tie up here as eventually it is Watson who has it. Hyde takes it over to the far side. Franks, I believe that is, is on him as it's played now by the Vipers. Intercepted. This one's up into the air and gloved down by Johnson. Brenner with it. Brenner over to the far side and it's cleared out by Reinhold at least to the red line for Hyde puts it back in. <coughs> Watson stretch pass, gets the stick of number 59, Logan Ryan. And it's cleared back to center. Watson off the wall. Gets it back inside the Homestead zone before it's sent back down. Playing a little bit of a back and forth right now. Here's Brenner. Gets it inside the zone. Hurley picks it up now for Homestead. Hurley takes it around to the far side. Fed up ice. Here's Fogwell. Fogwell into the zone. There's a wrist shot. In and out of the glove of Clark. Centers it. Nobody there. McNary out to the point. Loxton lost his foot. He held it in on his knees. Fed over to the middle. Fogwell can't get it. Settle. Watson's there. And is played now by Johnson. Johnson gets over the line. Towards the slot. That one's blocked. It rolls to the corner. Out to the point now. There is a slap shot. That one's wide. Shot coming from uh, Dylan Parks. And now the Spartans the other way. It is McNary. McNary circles, Ooh, there's a that's a there, and Oh man, now they're lot we're looking like we might have another one. That did not look good for uh, Mr. McNary. It looked like we might have had a little knee action on that one, but he's up. Skating pretty well, two back to the bench, so we'll see. Another power play. Just a trip. Just a trip. You said it, Hunter. Second attempt here for the Homestead Spartans. One for two so far. One for one, excuse me, so far, I believe. 
see if they can dial up another one. Face off one, there's a one-time drive by Gutman that is blocked. Over to the far side. Gathered up now, out to the point for Gutman. Gutman with a rest shot, tipped in front into the safety netting, play whistle down. Yeah, right idea with the low shot though, right idea. And he keeps the face off in the zone as well, redirected up out of play by Fort Wayne. Face off won by the Vipers. Scully plays it off the wall, held in by Hurley. Hurley with it. Fed over to the near side, Latwinko with it. There's a wrist shot in and out of the glove of Clark. Ormsby has it, tries to clear, cannot. As it looked like it hit off uh, Martinsky's stick, maybe. Uh, and there's going to be another penalty coming up to the Vipers. There's a shot, save made there. Here's Martinsky. Martinsky touched up there by the Vipers. Play whistle down, and now a five on three. It is, man. I was about to think we're a four on four. You're right. That is tough. Yeah, so Ormsby just kind of finishes his hit there. They call him roughing, so they adjudicate that that one was just a tad too late. Puck wasn't there anymore, and I believe the rule uh, for the last couple of years has been yep. when the puck is gone, don't care, you have to call it, and they do right there. And so five on three here for a little over a minute, a minute and about a quarter. Here nice. is Scully, takes away from the Twinko, and he clears it down the ice. Nicely clear. done there by the officiating crew on that call. Tremendous work. Here comes the Spartans. It's Latwinko leading the way. Over the line on the attack. Shot towards the net wide. Hurley has it. I was wondering. I thought it was around the near side. I couldn't see it. Just uh, There's a shot in by Hurley and scores through the screen. Almost no chance for Clark to see that one. Rocket nope. from the point. Absolutely a real wicked wrister, if you will, Brandon and Hunter. I mean, that's just good stuff right there. Homestead, another power play goal. That's two of the three, and this one just takes its sweet time, kind of trickling out to the point. Hurley just walks it along, and, I mean, it looks like it's, you know, Homestead's got those two guys kind of posted up in front of the net, down the slot area, and Hurley able to just fire that wrist to right past Clark. Might not have even seen it. Three to one, Homestead. Pow, pow, pow. And he's still got 125 to go here of a, a five on four. A tie up here eventually is worked free by Van Rijn. And Ryan over the line, trying to cut towards the net, cannot. Then Ryan takes a bump there from Loxton, coming in to help his Strick. Strick plays it now for the Spartans. Backhand to the near side for Morrison. Morrison bumped down on the play. Lyle Watson clears it, and here's Van Ryan shorthanded. Oh. Van Ryan in the zone, all by himself, takes it to the corner. We've seen some bounces off those doors lately. Kind of getting like we'd see on the tech ice. Yes, we have. Need to get these things fixed. We want to be the premier ice facility in Indiana. This one tied up into the wall as uh, onside. Our did not know where that one was. And it was in a mess of bodies. Watson around the wall over to the far side where it'll be played now by Loxton. He gets sent down by Vertels. Here's Strick around the wall back to the far side. Here is Sam Loxton. Tied up with Watson, or no, that's um, that's not Watson. That is number 17, Reinhold. Vipers certainly making sure that they're engaged physically on that shift, as were both teams. Lots of bodies being fly, just flying around all over the place. Bodies on the ice. The bodies are hitting the floor. This one gloved down. Power play over. So just one goes against them on the five on three. And Chapman. Brings it in for the offsides. You're right, Brandon. Just one on the five on three there. But now Homestead yet again leading by two, which is not what you want to see if you're wearing a red jersey tonight. About halfway through, second period action here. Face off, taking control of by Ormsby. It gets it inside the zone. Gutman around over to the far side for Llewellyn. There's a shot, that one's wide. 
Loose puck gathered up in neutral by Homestead. And now two on one here. There's a shot towards net, sticked up into the air, and it's broken up. Ormsby clears out to the point, held in by Gutman. A few bodies go down, it's eventually worked free. Now Ormsby the other way. Ormsby into the zone, here's a chance, a shot save made, rebound opportunity, stopped again oh. by Doherty. Not a very good gap there from the Homestead defenseman, fellas. Held inside the zone by Franks, shot towards the net, save made by Doherty, Llewellyn with it. To McNary. This one sent down the ice by Chapman, and it will be an icing. Really good look there for the Vipers on that uh, play off the pads towards the back door. But Ormsby, I believe it was, given way too much space right there. I mean, the Vipers defenseman, uh, the Homestead defenseman, excuse me, just backs up, backs up, backs up, doesn't even attempt to really gap up at all. And Ormsby, all the time in the world to pick out his spot there, delay and wait for his teammates to show up on the scene. Looks for the rebound, and they just come up short. Uh, but for Homestead, that's an opportunity that you did not have to concede. <coughs> this one's sent down the ice. No ice in here. As we are approaching the halfway point, Scully lost his footing, and he went into the board awkwardly. Play whistled down. Yeah, hopefully that's just a stinger. That one, though, went in, uh, unfortunately. It looks like he just maybe lost an edge. Looks like he's more hurt on the upper body than anything. Awkward fall into the wall. Yeah, very much so. And a loud one too. Good eye into the draw against Martinsky. Pulled back by Martinsky, fakes the shot was Hurley. Hurley hits the brakes, has Whistler all over him. Off the wall, back down to Martinsky. Martinsky circles back. There's a shot. Blocker save made by Clark. Gerber backhands out to the point. High goes off the glass. Weird bounce off the glass. Here's a shot. Blocker save made by Clark. Good reflexes on that one. Reinhold around over the far side. Watson tries to poke it out. Knocked away by Latwinko. Fed to the slot. Nobody there for the Spartans. Van Ryan has it. Behind the net, it is going to be Latwinko. Loose puck, goes around, gets around uh, Reinhold there. As Martinsky accidentally collides with an official, Reinhold also lost the footing. Everyone's flying around here. Here's Martinsky just weaving his way through, eventually knocked out by Watson. Hey, you know, uh, the Vipers were really having their way in the first period. I think that is somewhat flipped here as Homestead really kind of buzzing right now. The Twinko stretch pass that is the an high easy slot. slash. There's a shot and it's blocked. There's a backhand try. It's loose at the side of the net and Clark has it. Yeah, and so Watson's going to sit here for that big old slash he delivered. And so gives Homestead another power play of which they're two for two so far. Uh, so uh, this two could for three. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Either way, point remains 66%. So this could be a, a this could be a figurative own goal here from Watson uh, if Homestead scores again uh, off of an unnecessary penalty. Six twenty-two to go here in the second period. Three to one, still our score. Face off won by the Vipers, and Scully picks it up. <coughs> Scully racing up the near side, shorthanded, look at him go. And that one is offsides. Scully obviously uh, appears to be all right, just based on that. Probably just got the wind knocked out of him. Yep. On the pole. Just a little stinger. Just uh, got him a little bit. Face off drawn back by the tails. Sent into the Homestead zone where Loxton plays it over to Llewellyn. Loxton clears it out. Sent into the zone by Sam Loxton as it is behind the net. Strick backhands it out to Loxton with a shot blocked there by Knudsen. Llewellyn with it. Llewellyn up to Loxton. Loxton to Morrison. Tie up along the wall. 
Worked free by the Spartans. Scully has it, goes off the glass, back down into the zone. Still a minute to go here, minute five to be exact on the power play for Homestead. They set up behind the net. Over to Morrison, gets a stick on it, but Lou Scully just slaps it right back down the ice. Yeah, Homestead not really getting it cooking here on this power play. Haven't really been able to get it inside the zone and set up. You almost forget that they're on a power play. Tipped inside the zone, Scully knocks it away. Van Ryan with it. Short-handed chance here for the Vipers. Van Ryan hits the brakes and sends it down low below the goal line over to the far corner. Here comes Gerber, bumped off the play there, reverses back and is played now to the near side. Martinsky with it, lost it on the handle, brought back inside the zone by the Vipers, onside play. Martinsky shot, scores! A bit of a weird shot, converts for the Spartans. Yeah, man, I got to see this one. I mean, he's just kind of cutting across here. This shot's not particularly strong, I don't think. I mean, he just... Let me take a look. Is that another power play goal? It yes. is. Jesus, see? I mean, he just kind of skates across here. I mean, it's not even a particularly dangerous shot. It's not very high off the ice. It just goes right back across, and Clark just doesn't stop it. And we already got the change of goalie, and uh, in comes uh, Rossworm. So, as you mentioned, the goaltending change here for the Vipers. 4.42 left here in the second period. Base off one by the Vipers. They get it inside the zone. And here comes McNary into the zone. Here is Parks, far side. Gets the Franks. Franks lost on the stick handle or stick lift as Hurley now has it. Here's Hurley with a shot towards the net. Save made by Rossworm, who hangs on. And Hurley getting some attention here from a couple of Vipers players, just following the play up to the net, to the uh, net, and not huge fans of that are the uh, are the Vipers. Four fifteen to go here in the second period. Change here for the teams. There'll be Martinsky against Ormsby. It's loose, pulled through by Reinhold. Off the wall, far side for Bertels. Fed in the zone, that one's through the feet of Whistler, and the Spartans at least get it to center ice where it's put back in, their own zone. <coughs> 3.58 to go here, tied up behind the net. I think Hurley lost the stick. And he did. Bertels with it. Patel's cross crease feed intercepted by Martinsky. It's loose behind the goal line. Far side, Gutman rifles it around the wall. And it's held in by Watson. Shot towards the net. That one's blocked as it's still there. Picked up now by Hurley. Hurley just weaving oh his way God. through into the zone. That one's off the skate of Watson, I believe. Yeah, some Gutman. of the Vipers got a great view of that one. Here's Bertel's. Bertels feels the pressure there from the Twinko and Gutman, or Hurley, excuse me. And here's Hurley. Hurley around the wall to the far side. Martinsky and Bertels battle for it. They tie up now, it poked free, and it is picked up Hurley. He sends it down the ice, and it will be an icing. Fans getting fired up below us here. They've been going the whole game, Hunter. I'm glad you mentioned that. Those guys are really bringing some juice, man. I mean, they're into it. I don't know if they're Vipers fans or not. I think they might be. I haven't been paying too close attention. But if they are Vipers fans, I admire them still being as juiceful as they are, uh, given the score. Face off far side. And is poked free by the Spartans. This one on side, but taken away. Here comes Hyde. Hyde into the zone. There's a feed towards the slot. Missed everybody. Ooh. Ooh. Heavy hit there by Gadein. Big hit alert, Brandon. Big hit alert. Gadein gets oh, the return that's from probably Morrison. Boarding. No, that one could have been boarding. I mean, he went into the wall. Here is Ryan. 
Ryan sends it in, hit the shin pad of the official, but still on side. As that one is sent below the goal line, around over to the far corner. This one up into the air. At center ice, it's loose. Nobody played it, but Loxton with a shot. Glove save made by Rossworm. I don't know if you guys are seeing this as well, but it looks like when Homestead's bringing their breakout, they're just bringing it right up the middle. I feel like the Vipers have got to do a better job of closing in that gap between the circles in order to stop Homestead from doing what they're doing. You know, Hunter, that's a good point. I mean, at this point, the Vipers got to do something differently to slow Homestead down because, I mean, the first period has really just been kind of flipped around here, and Homestead's really kind of having their way uh, for the most part here in the middle frame. This one cleared off the glass, held in by Gutman. Taken away, here's Chapman with a shot. Blocker save made by Rossworm. Bertel's off the wall. Williams, far side. Held in by Llewellyn. Shot towards net, blocked by Watson. <laughs> oh, turnover, right in the slot. Fed out, here is Llewellyn again. Llewellyn taken down, and it's going to be a penalty on the Vipers. Oh, they gotta be careful here, because I don't think Bertel's heard it. There you go, they got him. Jeez, man, that is very tough. As another one heads to the box here with a minute 33 to go. Yeah, so this will be number five already for Homestead. Already. So they are calling them here in the early going. So another power play here for the Spartans. Martinsky against Bertels. <clears throat> Face off one by Martinsky, out to the point. Loxton has it. Loxton down to Llewellyn. Or Llewellyn, that is Mar uh, Latwinko. There you go. I'm thinking of the previous play. Yeah, multiple choice though, it's okay. Here's the centering feed, knocked out of the air. Latwinko with it. Cuts to the slot. Out to the point now for Loxton, down low to Martinsky. Martinsky, sharp angle try, hits the outside of the net. Good stick lift there on Scully to keep it alive for a moment, and it's cleared by Knutson. Good hold there by the Vipers, able to get the clear on it as we're inside the final minute now. Behind the net. It looked like it was Latwinko with it. It turned over, though. And Martinsky has it. He's tied up into the wall. Latwinko with it. 40 seconds to go here in the period. It's backhand over to the near side for Hurley. Gets pressured by Van Ryan. Gerber with it. Right up to Martinsky, who chips it inside the zone before it's sent right back out. Around the wall, over to the far side corner. Locks in with it. Locks in over to the near side. Nobody there, and it is going to be picked up by Hurley. Hurley tries to dodge a hit from Van Ryan. Got uh, dodged about 80% of it. As this one's sent into the Viper zone before being cleared with five seconds to go, and that's probably going to do it here. Scully, though, looking for something. Spin around, try is blocked, and the horn will sound. We'll take a break here. The Spartans up 4 to 1 over the Vipers. We'll have 26 seconds of power play time left for the third period. We'll take a break as you're watching high school hockey here on Summit City Sports. This league promotes finding diamonds in the rough. Kids that didn't have an opportunity, they're on the wrong team, they had the wrong coach. If we can find those kids, which we have 20 of them now, that we build a team in 45 days. I look at like the amazing facilities and like the coaching staff, like everything looked perfect for me. It's kind of a no-brainer for me. Here is, I heard was very professional and I had absolutely no idea that it was such a big hockey community. Saw the amazing facilities here and coaching staff. Felt like it was a good fit for me. I noticed my confidence got up. 
And I think the system starts with what you do off the ice, right? And that's been our biggest challenge, right? Is taking these kids from different places in the world, right? And bringing them in and, and trying to establish a culture. And it's been difficult, right? Um, to teach discipline, to teach accountability, to show up on time, right? That's where it all starts. We have the resources that, frankly, other programs don't have, and we try to utilize them to the best of our abilities. I mean, they, they'll help each individual out as, as well as like all team stuff, so they, they do a good job um, giving everybody what they need to get better at or what they think they should be working on more. Our schedule's really nice during the week. We get a lot of ice time, time in the gym. Um, all of our all the facilities here are brand new, super nice, from the gym to the locker room. The rink is unreal as it is. We work out twice a week here, um, and our trainers give us uh, as much of resources as they can to uh, push us and make us better off the ice, to help us on the ice too. All of our workouts um, are kind of tailor-made for uh, hockey players. and The coaching staff helped me get better like offensively. Uh, John Solway uh, helped me like work on my stride, my edges. His teaching is uh, is really good. He processes it in a way that uh, makes it easy for us to kind of uh, reciprocate what he's doing in a way that's kind of lower to our level. For them to see the professionalism and the support that they have. I mean, it's second to none. It's remarkable to see, you know, these guys, you know, getting the chance to, you know, talk to the, you know, people in the community and the kids and the opportunity to um, really have that moment to themselves, right? And have that opportunity to essentially, you know, live the day in the life of what it's like to, to play pro hockey, right? I mean, they're around the Fort Wayne Comets, you know, earlier in the year, guys were coming out, you know, and helping the kids. And, and it's remarkable because they get to see what it takes to play at the next level. Right? Not only uh, Josh, but we've got Jerry Moss, who helps with our goaltending, and Paris Duffus, who is a, a familiar name for Fort Wayne fans that really helps our goalies off the ice. And I think gives them the mental um, approach that they need to advance to the next level as we know that's really important with, with goaltending. He preaches accountability. He always makes sure, accountability on and off the ice actually. He, ma he makes sure we're doing the right things off the ice and we're more importantly doing the right things on the ice. Making sure we're you know, always just ready to go, ready to play. Never, never having a, our minds stray throughout a game or a practice, always be just ready to go. We tell these kids all the time, you know, from high school till about college to your junior years, you've got seven to, you know, eight years to work really hard and get your um, life on the right path. Or you can goof off and, you know, not pay attention and, and get involved with the wrong people. And then the rest of your life after that eight years is going to be pretty difficult, right? So trying to get them prepared for the real world is priority number one. There's a lot of hockey players in the world and you're not all going to make the highest team and not get noticed. Or you might become the best hockey player you've ever been at 20. You, you don't know when you're going to come out of your shell. So they have to have this opportunity to play or they may never be seen. Back here at the Sport One Parkview Ice House, we are in our intermission between the Vipers and Homestead. Where the Homestead Spartans are up to a four to one lead. Yeah, and the Vipers are, um, I mean, it's just, they had a really good first period. And they just, you know, obviously couldn't really get the goals they were looking for. They got one from Bertels there at the end. Um, but, I mean, Homestead just kind of took it to them in the goal department and especially kind of took the play to them there as well in the second. And uh, the power play is what is working for Homestead as well. That's another thing that is not working in favor of the Vipers. I mean, the power play right now for Homestead, is three for five and they still got 26 seconds of that fifth one still here to go so we'll see if the goaltending change does a whole lot for them um you would think so i mean rossworm was pretty solid last week a lot of those goals were defensive <coughs> errors or just fluky so we'll see man i mean 
three goals in 15 minutes with the way this one has gone is probably a pretty tall ask. But I guess we'll just have to see what happens. You never know. So we'll look at some of our sponsors here on Summit City Sports. As I mentioned, today's broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. That is 260 Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions and enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a friendly, friendly environment found only at the Big Eyed Fish. Kelly Automotive Group is Indiana's number one automotive group with over 1,000 new vehicles and 500 pre-owned vehicles to choose from. And now, if I'm doing my math right, they are celebrating year number 72 in business. Give them a visit at drivekelly.com, the Kelly Automotive Group, where it's simple, transparent, and reliable. Tom Steel Tires been servicing the Northeast Indiana area for generations. They will offer the perfect tire for your vehicle, as well as other auto repair services like brakes, wheel alignment, engine diagnostics, and more. Visit their north location at 2620 North Clinton Street or their south location at 3530 West Jefferson Boulevard. At Ottenweller Contracting, we take the time to invest in our customers by providing peace of mind during the entire process from bid until build. Visit us at Ottenweller Contracting. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area with ages ranging from 5 to 18 years old. Our players are equipped with elite level skills and the foundation of life skills. Jump on board and together we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning is dedicated to providing you with the best possible solution for your home or business. And it is a system and solution that will fit your unique needs. Head over to AndersonCoolHeat.com or give us a call at 260-557-0958 for more information. Are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you, whether it's expunging your criminal, rec criminal record or getting your driver's license reinstated? We can give you a hand with that at the Jolie Law Firm. We'll take a quick break here as we still got a couple more laps here for the Zam before we return. In the meantime, we'll take another break. Summit City Sports, high school hockey. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958 or request an appointment on our website. Call Anderson Heating and Air, where your emergency is our emergency. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. I think it's really important for freshmen to realize you get out of college what you put into it. If you dedicate yourself to your classes and to your projects and to what you're doing in college, you're going to have a really great experience here. I wish someone would have told me my freshman year that it's important to prioritize, knowing what's important, what's not important, knowing what I need to do opposed to what I want to do. 
The two things that I think all freshmen should know is uh, buy a parking permit so you don't rack up a bunch of fines and tickets. And also uh, make sure you go to class because it seems like a good idea when you're skipping, but then it's not worth it in the end when you fail the test or don't turn in homework. As an international student, my advice for the freshmen is to not be afraid to make friends because your friends here will end up being your family away from home. Anything that you want to do, anything that you want to put on, anything that you want to showcase on campus, you can. There's always people around to help you do what you want to do here. Make sure that you always take time for yourself to make sure that you're okay. Because college can be very overwhelming as far as like schoolwork and friends and sports and just like everyday life. Always just make sure that you get what you need to get done. It's important to have a relationship with your professors because you you become more personable with them. You start to engage in the material more. They can give you recommendations, especially once you get out of college. You definitely want to put them down as like references. And if you have a better personal relationship, it just makes the whole learning experience go smoothly. Waffle breakfast sandwiches are dropping at Tim's. Our sweet, fluffy maple waffles packed with a fresh cracked egg, savory sausage, or sizzling bacon, and melty gooey cheese. The maple waffle breakfast sandwich, made to make your day. It's time for Tim's. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Back here at the Sport One Park View Ice House, we get set for third period action here between the Vipers and Spartans. Homestead still has 26 seconds of power play time left to work with this period on a fresh sheet of ice. I'm anyone? sorry, what did you say? I'm not even I wasn't <laughs> Any even one of you got comments. I'm sorry, what did you say? I Either one of you. I mean, yeah, I don't know what you said, but we're back for the third <laughs> period. We're ready to Homestead go. Homestead with 26 seconds of power play time left on a fresh sheet of ice. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, of course, with the fresh ice, the, you know, we'll see if it's dried up enough. That's usually something I keep an eye out on when we come out for the start of a period. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, if Homestead could get another one here in the next 26 seconds, you almost would have to think that's the dagger, right? I mean, that might be all she wrote, pardon the miracle. So we'll have to see. Very important here for uh, the Vipers to escape this last 26 seconds. Shots on goal for that last period. A total flip around 13 for Homestead, 4 for the Vipers. Homestead with the 22-19 advantage through 30 minutes. So, fades off to center ice. One back by the Vipers. Knudsen gives chase as it was one a little too strong and went all the way into their own zone. This one sent around the wall. It's going to be tapped down by Hurley. Hurley back inside the zone. Hits the brakes. Fed over to the near side as it is Gerber who gives chase. <clears throat> He's bumped off the play and is cleared down the ice. And that will do it for the power play. As here is Gutman. Gutman or Latwinko with it. Gets it up to Gerber. A little of a blind pass to Ormsby. Mm -hmm. As Latwinko has it. Got the hiccup there on that one. It happens. Here is Latwinko and sends it back down to below the goal line of his own zone. Hurley hits the brakes. As Homestead is looking at the setup on the breakout. Off the glass, down the ice, and it will go for an icing. Nobody home there. Correct. <laughs> Nobody there. So that will bring the face off all the way back down into the Homestead zone. Strick will go to the face off against Goodine. As is one back by the Viper, shot immediately on net, stopped by Doherty. Reinhold at the point. Watson tries to poke it down low as he gets it to the slot. It's taken away. 
Good eye, bumped in the wall by Loxton. Van Ryan tied up with Strick. Pops free, hide over to the far side. Morrison gets a bump from Whistler. <coughs> Has his cleared out to the point for Watson. Watson with a shot, that one's wide. Around the wall, it's going to be played out by Loxton, and it's going to be grabbed by Gadine. Watson off the glass. This one's tipped into the Homestead bench as everyone goes ducking a little bit. Look out. So I want to be getting hit with those pucks, and that is some firm rubber. See, I think it was Sunday. Uh, Coach Rock had to go uh, diving out of, the, out of the way of one. He got rifled into the bench. No, thank you. You gotta have your head on a swivel down there at all times. You never know when it could be coming your way. Chapman against, it looked like Bertels in the face off. Bertels come away with it. Bertels sends it inside the zone on net. And it's gonna be fielded by Doherty. It's the exact same way with me in the baseball world, man. In those dugouts. Oh my goodness, Jeez, Hunter. those things come flying. Especially when you got all the boys hanging over the rail. Yeah, it's oh man, it's scary. Head on a swivel. That's all it takes. If you're standing, on, if oh. you're standing on the rail, you got to be watching the game. Heck yeah. Parks keeps it in. Around Bertels has it behind the net. Centers it, broken up. Fogwell will leave it for McNary. McNary goes right up the middle, gets it inside the zone. This one's sent down the ice and will be an icing. For those who don't know too much about Hunter, he is on board with the Fort Wayne Tin Caps. Big Tin Caps guy. Heck yeah, man. Assistant Clubby of the Year last year, yeah? Yeah, last season. Uh, don't Won't find out until December if I'm going to retain the award, but uh, we shall see. If you're back to back, man, they got to bring you on. Yeah. Here's Martinsky. Held it inside the zone for a brief moment. Scully picks it up for the Vipers, clears it out to center ice. Taken away. Here's the Twinko. And that one is offsides. Uh oh. We'll see if he gets any questioning from that shot. Looks like not. And well, I didn't fair enough. That. Yeah. I mean, he was kind of already winding up when the whistle went off, so. And I mean, the Vipers also don't need to be taking any penalties, so. So phase off in the neutral zone. It is pulled back by Homestead. Locks in with it off the wall to Gerber. Loose at center ice, it is sent in by Latwinko. Scully with it. Scully takes it behind the net around to the near side. Scully coming into the zone with speed. Bumps Llewellyn off the play. Scully still picks it up. Sends it towards the middle, and it is wide. Here's Knutson, hits the outside of the net. Still loose. Here's a chance. And yep. we're going to have a holding call here. I believe it will be. Yeah. As on, uh, again, got to go ducking, and that one's labeled for the bench, and it is a holding call. It is on Loxton right in front of the referee. <laughs> got his arm wrapped around the stomach of that Vipers player, and that one... Not really going to be able to argue. So the Vipers on the power play. I got them marked down as this being their third of the hockey game. Well, see what they got. Two minutes here. 11.40 left in the regulation third period. Spartans win it, and it's held in by Lawrence. We have the point. Over to Scully near side. Scully with a backhand into the glove of Doherty. Easy. Two one on that one. So, face off near side. Martinsky lines up. It looks like he'll be against Bertels. One by Martinsky. Out to the point, held in. Scully a shot. Blocked oh. in front by Van Ryan, looking for the tip. And that one's cleared. Ross Warren plays it to Scully. Scully behind the net, taking a look at the options, gets it to Bertels. Bertels back to Scully. Scully circles around. Here's Bertels into the zone. 
Around over to the far corner. Ormsby towards the net, way above it, and it's going to bounce out to Bertels. Here's Scully. Scully with a shot. Tipped in front, save made there by Doherty. Ooh, Bertels was looking for it there on Hurley, but Hurley's a solid fella. Martinski plays it in the far corner. The Vipers gather it back. Coming down the near side is Bertels over the line. Bertels has time to look. Gets over to Ormsby a little too hard on the pass and can't get it settled. Bertels with it. Off the wall to himself and accidentally knocks it out of the zone. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I think they just took a little bit too long to make that pass across. I mean, he stood there for a little bit too long, letting everybody kind of get in the play. When you've got those numbers, especially already on the power play, you got to attack. Over to the near side, or far side, now cutting to the near side was Franks to Watson. Watson over the line at the point. Lost it there to Chapman. And then a miscommunication there finds now Franks to Watson a drive. Missed it high and wide. This one rolls all the way down the ice. And that's pretty much going to do it for the power play here with five seconds to go. The Spartans tie up in the far corner. Back to even strength now. Still trying to work it free. Still tied up, and now it's poked loose. Franks has it behind the net. Off the wall to Watson. Watson tries to turn it over. Well, tries to get it out, but turns it over. Because that one is down for icing. <clears throat> Face up goes all the way back down inside of the Viper zone. It'll be far side. Nine seventeen to go, face off one by the Spartans. Llewellyn off the wall, down low for Strick. Centers it, here's Morrison with a chance as two of the Vipers collide and it looked like one of them was the goaltender Rossworm. Uh-oh. Tied up along the far boards. Played out now by Parks, turned over. Here comes the Spartans. They can't get anything settled as it's cleared back out. Down below the goal line. Williams takes a bump there. Here's Bertels on the turnover. Backhand blocked. Loose puck gathered up by Strick. <clears throat> Strick into the zone. Oh, my God. Got him on the hip. I'm surprised they're not calling that. Yeah, I was very shocked. He I got thought a whistle. That was a little bit after the play. Now they got yeah. something. I didn't yeah. even see an arm go up, but we heard a whistle, and I think they're going to take him. Yeah. That was a very ugly hit. I mean, it was just late, too. I mean, I think that's probably the bigger issue of concern here. What guy he came from underneath when he laid the hit as well? Oh, they're going to take them both. Hip uh, check. Five uh, on five. Maybe they just uh, exchanged some words with each other, and the uh, referee didn't like that. Looks like roughings to both, possibly, as Ruff. they were still going a little bit at it after the hit. So, 5-on-5 five five action, 8.32 to go here. Martinsky goes to the draw against Gudine, and it's won by Martinsky. Here is the Spartans. Gerber fanned on the pass. It's played now by Van Ryn. Off the, oh, knocked off the skate of the official. Far side. It's gathered up by Scully. Holding for both, it sounded like, actually, so I was wrong. I'll Not confirm. Be roughs. I'll confirm. Yeah, both like holding. It. All right. I thought it was going to be roughings. Yeah. Huh. Either way, 5-on-5 five five action. They'll sit for two minutes until the whistle blows and their time expires. Martinsky and Ormsby to the faceoff. <coughs> One back by the Vipers. Scully trying to cut to the middle, taken away by Gerber. Here's Martinsky going up the far side into the zone. Martinsky <laughs> dodges one of the players. There's a shot just wide. As Martinsky claimed some ankles on that one. He did. Who's puck? Here's Latwinko. Another move there. There's a feed towards the middle, up into the air and wide. Hurley holds the point. 
with a shot. Save made there by Rossworm, and he'll get this one diffused. So, 7.32 to go here. Face off down in the far end. One back by the Vipers. Off the glass, down the ice, hits the safety netting. And we'll get a whistle. Yep. Send it right back. About halfway through the period here. Vipers still trailing by three. Would desperately enjoy to get one here and move this puck up ice with some urgency. <laughs> Face-off controlled by the Vipers. It's loose in the corner. This one's sent, oh, off a shin pad of Van Ryn. And there, oh. Ah, I'm surprised they didn't call that one. Here's McNary. Gets it inside the zone. Watson takes it behind the net. Around to Chapman. Throws it towards the net. It's stopped there by Rossworm. Up into the air. Knocked down. Gudain clears it. Given chase is Loxton. He's got three Vipers on him as he clears it out to center. Van Ryan takes it away. Back over the line on the attack. Hyde gives him some pressure. Bumped in the wall, here's Gedein. Gedein sets up behind the net. That one out to the point. Here's Reinhold with a shot. Kicked away by Loxton. Reinhold sends it down low. Loxton plays it over to McNary, far side. He gets sent down, Chapman with it. Chapman over the blue line on the attack. Shot wide of the net. Loose puck gathered up now by Whistler. Goes off the wall, down the ice, and it will be an icing. Not really a, a whole lot going on here at this point. Are moving along, though. We are Our moving next along. game isn't scheduled to start for another 29 minutes. So we'll have a bit of a break here between games. Just a little bit. Brandon, I know that's your favorite thing. 6.21 to go here. Face off, tied up, and Strick tried to get a shot off, but it hit a shin pad. Scully, tied up, lost it to Loxton. Scully clears out to center ice. There's a chance for the Vipers. Shot towards the net is blocked by Gutman. Hurley off the wall to Morrison. Mm. Cleared out to center ice, Scully with it. Scully. Turns it over to Gutman at center ice. Gutman shot towards the net, it goes wide. Here is Strick, onside play. Gets it down below the goal line. Scully has it now for the Vipers. Over to the near side, Williams backhands it down. As is played by Hurley. Loxton picks it up here, throws it in goal, takes a hop, and Roswell plays it. Ross Worm. Here come the Vipers. Ooh. The zone. There's a heavy hit there on Johnson. Martinsky fans on it, but with the support of Loxton, picks it right back up. Martinsky goes around Watson, but he lost it there on the stick handle. Still loose at center ice. And Martinsky picks it up now for Homestead. Loxton gets it inside the zone. Watson picks it up for the Vipers, sends it around over to Ornsby. Ornsby off the wall. Johnson ties up with Martinsky. Gathered up now by Ormsby. Poked off his stick. Ormsby gets it right back. Bertels coming inside the zone. Ooh. Bertels, nice move there. A shot oh. off the post. And it's cleared oh out by Oh my goodness, those two, Bertels and Ornby just, just full speed ran into each other. Bertels hits the iron, that almost was, got two. That was yucky, I'm not gonna lie. That was he, was, he was pretty nice with that one. That was very good looking stuff there from number nine. Looking for his second of the game. He's the only one that scored so far this year in league play for the Vipers, so that is a, uh, it's going to be an interesting stat to see how long that one might last for. Bertels goes around the center. 
Tied up with Martinsky. Good battle there. They tie up in the wall. Gerber clears it out to center. <clears throat> Sent back in, delayed all sides. The Vipers touch up. Here's Gutman. Tries to clear, held in by Reinhold. Ryan gets hit there by Martinsky. Tie up into the wall. Still trying to work it free, Gerber does. Here is Hurley. Hurley leading the rush up the middle. <coughs> Plays it to the corner. Watson lost his edge. And Bertels gets hit from gets a hit from behind as he hit one of the Spartans. And we'll have a penalty coming up on the Vipers. And if it is checked from behind, that will be the end of Mr. Bertels' night. <clears throat> Certainly in no rush to get to the penalty box. Cross-checking. So now power play number six for Homestead. Face off one by the Spartans. It's poked out there by Van Ryn. Loxton up by, intercepted by Scully to Van Ryn. Short-handed opportunity here for the Vipers. Van Ryan with a shot, saved made by Doherty. It's loose at the side of the net. Doherty has it now. That one looked like it might have almost rolled over his shoulder and almost went in. So he did he a did, good job there. He did there. seal it. Yeah, he got. He was made sure he got up on his toes a little yeah. bit to seal off the uh, crossbar, the corner, or the crossbar yeah. of the post meet. That was very close though. So good on him on getting the shoulder up there, standing tall. I'm going to hold my clock for three seconds as mine kept going for a brief second, and now we're good. Face off controlled by the Vipers. Gutman with it. Over to Gerber. Played now by Martinsky. To Gerber and a feed and broken up. Scully behind the net. Nice little job, nice little chip there. There's a heavy hit along the boards. Oh, it's the point for Gutman. Shot towards the net, sticked away by Rossworm. Gathered up now and cleared by, looks like Knudsen. Hurley over to Litwinko. Gets inside the zone at the high slot with a shot. Stick save made. Rebound pops right back out, but cleared away by one of the Viper players. It looks like it was Williams. Here's Martinsky. Shot hit the oh. post. Ormsby can't clear. Held in by Hurley. Off the wall, Ormsby gets a second opportunity. Held in by Hurley again. Faked me out there. <laughs> hey, it happens, Hunter, it happens. 35 seconds to go here on the power play. 2.03 to go in the third. Strick right up the near side. Hits the brakes, fed towards the slot for Loxton and is broken up. Here's Gutman, a shot, save made. Rebound cleared away by Knudsen. And that one sent down the ice and with 15 to go here, it hops over Doherty's stick, and the power play might be over with. Morrison being pressured by Gadein. And Gadein keeps it in, back to full strength here. And Gadein and Hurley go into the wall, they tie up. Van Ryn has it in his feet, he is still hung up with Hurley, backhand feed, knocked down. Van Ryan off the wall to himself. Lost it through the feet. Loxton clears out. Watson stops it. Ooh. Scores! That's Bertels on the redirect. Is it Bertels? I think so. It looks like it is. He's celebrating. It was definitely redirected. And he's leading it. So still Bertels with the only one with goals. Yeah. Good stuff here, he just has the stick right in the way, gets the redirect, and that's enough to get it past Doherty. And it is officially Bertels with the goal. And we've got a penalty coming. 
High sticking right off the face off. And it looks like that is going to be on Homestead. That is, I believe, Martinsky. <clears throat> and it is. So now a fourth power play for the Vipers. And uh, I think we got a timeout on the ice. We'll take one as well. Summit City Sports. High school hockey. <clears throat> oh, didn't fire. So hold on one second. We'll try that again. Sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Anderson Heating and Air, locally owned and operated with over 50 years of experience. Call us today and get a free quote on a brand new furnace and AC, financed and available. Don't wait. Call us today and sign up for a maintenance agreement and stay cool. Our maintenance agreements will ensure that you're first in line if you have an emergency and we'll send one of our service techs out for cleanings twice a year. Call us at 557-0958. All right, back here, 109 to go. Tie up on the faceoff, went back out to the point. Ormsby sends it around the wall to the near side. One minute to go here. Empty net for the Vipers. Four to two is our score. Sent around the wall over to the near side. Bertels with it. Out to Scully. Scully to Bertels. Bertels fakes the shot, goes to Van Ryan. Feels the pressure. Forced out to the point, and it's held in. Hurley's there, and he's stick lifted by Bertels. Bertels tied up, gets it to Van Ryan. Here's a shot, scores! <laughs> A power play goal, Van Rijn. All right. Well, you know what? We still got ourselves a game here. That was a nice little wrister from Van Rijn, and he was pretty excited about it as well. We'll get a look at it here on the replay. It just comes to him. He's got some space to work with. Look at this. Fires it off quickly, and nothing but net. Nicely done there by the pair on the back end, able to keep that one in and give Bertels that look. Or that was not Bertels. My apologies there. Van Ryan. 30 seconds left to go. <laughs> we got ourselves a hockey game. Van Ryan tries the center. It's sent down the ice, and it rides the top of the glass. Yeah. How about this, man? This is exactly what we were talking about. You know what? An unlikely scenario, and uh, they get two in 42 seconds. <clears throat> and, and a face-off in the center, or in the uh, offensive zone. Yep. Six on five, too. Everybody on that far side. Holmes is going to take their timeout, so we'll take one more here. All right, let's go hockey. Summit City Sports. Take that. Hold on. Oh, uh, come on. Man. What is I don't going know on? What's going on with my ads here? Give me one second. This is tough. Waffle breakfast sandwiches are dropping at Tim's. Our sweet, fluffy maple waffles packed with a fresh cracked egg, savory sausage, or sizzling bacon, and melty gooey cheese. The maple waffle breakfast sandwich, made to make your day. It's time for Tim's. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Back here at the Sport One Parkview Ice House, 22.8 to go. The Vibers mounting the comeback have made this interesting here. Down by a goal. As I mentioned, 22 seconds. They keep the goalie pulled. Face off in their offensive zone. And they've sent out the big guns. Yeah, should be a real race of the finish here. Homestead, though, I think you probably really only need just one clear all the way down. And you're probably in pretty good shape here. They win the face off. They go off the glass. It's Litwinko. Ah. And this one goes for the automatic icing. See, but I didn't factor that in, the automatic icing. I'm used to doing these tech games. you got to at least skate all the way down there. And Litwinko there just fires it all the way down. And that was 
very quick. I mean, that whole thing only took about seven seconds off the clock. And I think we might talking. even be putting more time on. Yep. Yeah, it looks like 15.6. So they almost added an entire second there. So we get the okay here. Near side phase off once again. Shot towards the net wide. Here's Ormsby. Centers it. It's broken up. Martinsky ties it up. Ten seconds to go. Trying to work it free. It's loose. Still work back to the corner. Five seconds to go. And that is going to do it. The Spartans hold on. Yeah. And pick up the 4-3 to three victory. They got close there. Great effort on the comeback by the Vipers, but Martinsky does such a good job just eating this puck in the corner. Gets some help from his D partner as well, and that's really all she wrote. They kept it pinned down there for probably close to 10 seconds there to close that one out. So good effort all around, and you know what? Just as it seemed like that one might be done and dusted, the Vipers really put in a good effort here, but <laughs> ultimately just fall uh, one step short. Uh, and we'll see what they've got next week as they've got Leo. Yep. Well, for Joe Hacker, Hunter Sosenheimer, I'm Brandon Porter. Join us here in about 15 minutes here for game number two this afternoon, evening. And it's Carol and Leo. Burf.